Hello, everybody. It's uh, Fadi Kudair here again with another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I'm your local realtor. This show is all about interviewing businesses around Ottawa, letting people know about Ottawa area. If you have any sort of suggestion, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments for any business that you like in the city that we would love to interview. With that being said, I am honored today to have with me on the show one of my really good friends, Raquel Hamaraki, okay. for Lamar Interiors. Raquel, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. I know we've been trying to kind of do this for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Por Lamar, yes. the name, very, very interesting. Tell me a little bit more about the story behind the name and why you chose that. Por Lamar is the literal translation for the word means by the sea. And uh, it also happens to be the name of the city where I grew up in Margarita Island, Venezuela. Oh, wow. Yes. By the I, sea. Uh, yeah, by the sea. Very fitting, you know. Por La Mar is one of the three large cities on the island. I grew up there and my father had his first, I guess, business where I was involved in and the whole family was involved. And this is where entrepreneurship had started for me. His shop, uh, Importadora del Pacifico. So as a child, I would help him uh, in, the, in the store. This is where I started loving business, loving, creating displays, creating anything that I can come up with in terms of, you know, what to present to people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It used to be like clothing or home decor or whatever that is. So Por La Mar just seemed to fit perfectly for how I wanted to introduce my business. Because when I remember Por La Mar, I remember the ease of life on the island and a little bit of the warm air and just the beauty of palm trees you know the beach and and everything that's natural natural i was surrounded with there and so it's the way i like to also work it's the way that i also like to apply elements to what i'm doing it's that comfort that is the breezy existence from like being in an island and for me as an interior designer i believe your home should sort of feel like that type of, not only it's sanctuary, but a very relaxing and a tranquil place, somewhere we can just, you know, be at complete ease, at complete comfort, and at the same time, really enjoy your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So, Por Lamar, yeah, it that's, sounds, that's... It sounds very, very fitting to what you actually do, which, like you said, it's basically making sure that it's ease, tranquility, yeah. fun, breezy sort of atmosphere within the home. Yeah, absolutely. With absolutely. that being said, could you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about your business and when did you start, how long you've been in business, and why did you start that business? So for Port Lamar Interiors in particular, I started it in 2016. But for creativity and design and decor, it was <laughs> much much further back uh, than that as a child i was building anything i can build with and create little models of public parks or homes and stuff like that mm -hmm. i've been here for about 30 years in canada and it's always been a passion of me to for me to decorate and create something beautiful and then do problem solving because for me space has become this beautiful challenge of trying to put in the things that i love in a way that give me that beautiful comfort and, and enjoy my space, love my space. For me, I'm a big believer that where you are should always give you peace, mm -hmm. right? Especially your home. So I started it in 2016 thinking that, you know, I'm going to start a, a small business of home staging, believe it or not, to start with. Done a, a course in uh, home staging and residential design and stuff like that. But the business really took off after I had uh, taught myself a little bit of navigation in an architectural software that I bought at the time and not knowing the possibilities of that uh, software. And, uh, of course, business just expanded from there. I've had a lot of opportunities, a lot of great opportunities yeah. to uh, learn a lot about uh, the materials, the colors, everything that's here and uh, meet fantastic people in the field. So for Por Lamar, and again, just that, going back a little bit before, I've always done design, I've always done decor, uh, friends, family, my own home, and it was natural for me to continue in that path, but really make it a career, make it a career out of it because it's something that I really enjoyed. So it sounds like, if, if I don't mean to cut you off there, yeah. but it sounds like you're, 
literally found your niche over the years as far as you know what you love to do that yeah. passion that you have that creativity that you have and you kind of channeled it all in one space which is creating beautiful space oh absolutely it's the ultimate rewarding thing that i do well besides you know raising my children it's no, who absolutely cares about that? <laughs> well i mean they're there they're good, they're good. <laughs> but seriously it's design for me it's not just design i love I, i'm coming into people's homes i'm coming into the homes of clients who want to you know, transform their space or make it more practical or make it uh, update it a little bit. And when I'm walking into their homes, I'm basically getting to know these people and getting to know the homeowners and getting to know how they live the life inside their home, their children, how they, uh, what their habits are in terms of every day, whether it's living in a space or cooking in the kitchen, the activities that they have to go back and forth. So mainly, the the thing that I enjoy the most and I find that I get a lot of uh, is uh, remodeling projects. A lot of uh, kitchen remodel, which I absolutely love. I uh, mean, they, they say the kitchen is, is pretty much 90% of the house. You know what? And, and coming from somebody who loves to cook, <laughs> with my heritage, my Lebanese background, and then even the Spanish heritage, we love to make food and we love to feed. <laughs> So but that's how you show love. At that's least. Yeah. Exactly. In the Middle East, that's really how you show love is just, you know, Absolutely. with food and company. And, yeah. and I find a lot of sort of relationships really get built around that love of food and love of company and, and really just kind of you know, Exactly. That's 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 where way. that saying, you know, you share bread with somebody mm -hmm. comes from because once breaking you Breaking bread. Breaking bread. You share and you break bread with somebody, you're, you know, you've pretty much become family. Yeah, um, I, I really like the uh, the point that you hit on earlier when you said creating a peaceful space. Mm -hmm. And I find a lot of it's missing. I, I find a lot of people are not necessarily living their best life or they're missing that element of peace within their space. Yes. How do you normally go about evaluating if this is the right client that you want to take on? And what are some of the challenges when you're evaluating those clients? Client-wise, you have to, in a business where you work with a lot of people, you have to sort of become um, more in tune and intuitive with whom you're speaking to and whom you're meeting and really trying to understand from them what do they want out of this space or what do they want out of the services that you provide. Mm -hmm. You have homeowners, you have a young family that wants you, you know, looks at you like the problem solver. They get to share with you the things that they do and the things that they want uh, uh, in their home to make their life a little bit easier, of course, with all the chaos and everything that happens every day from getting ready to work, getting uh, the kids ready for activities, for school, coming back. And, and I call it sometimes, you know, the kids pile in the door if it's a small space. And so for me, when I'm speaking to my clients and we're giving, there's a give and take, there's questions on my part, there's questions on their part, and then we do, we are both, both sides are able to assess whether we're a good fit for each other. Yeah. So uh, when I'm speaking with somebody and they're, they're open and completely honest about what they're looking for, saying, well, we're not very sure what we want. We're not very sure what kind of budget we have. We're really looking for guidance. And this is where I, I feel, okay, well, I'm able to sit down with you and really discuss in detail what are your options and depending on the level of give and take and the ease of it i know that we can work really well mm -hmm. that's not to say that sometimes i will face uh, indecisiveness from uh, certain clients or they're a little skeptical or hesitant and stuff like that and i'm able to sort of accommodate and then work with them it's it's also a little bit of matching energy you know, being yeah, able to yeah, be sounds like with people, put them at comfort, make sure that you're always, you know, I, I'm genuine. I love what I do. And so when I sit down with somebody, I'm able to sort of pick up on their personality a little bit, pick up on the way they like to communicate. Yeah. And so I match that to give them the trust and the comfort that, listen, I am here for you. I'm here to help you achieve what it is that you're looking for. And that just really opens up the way. Uh, I've so far been very lucky to have worked with wonderful people. A lot of them who, uh, even throughout the years, we just keep in touch. 
and it's fantastic. I still hear, oh, we love our space. We love this, you know, to the date. Amazing. Uh, Would it be fair to, I mean, uh, from my business is very kind of similar with the whole matching energy. Uh, Would it be fair to say that when you're interviewing first, Mm -hmm. Sort of like a first date. There, no, <laughs> like a first date. Yeah, you just want to see like if there's sort of compatibility. Yeah, and- yeah, to some extent, yeah. You can have different types of communication. And if I'm in a place where I'm not really getting enough feedback to understand what their need is, uh, it becomes a little bit more tricky to sort of help them out. And uh, this is where that part of me as a business rather than a decorator or an interior designer comes in and give them the right nudge, right? So I'm like, I'm I'm able to start any conversation. I'm able to pick up anywhere uh, they feel uh, they're hesitant or they can't communicate. And at the end of the day, I I have to assess, well, has it been really difficult and does it look like we can work together or I see a really good partnership here where I can proceed and I'm able to give them my services and give them the home that they deserve and a beautiful space that they feel happy in. And at the end of the day, have them be absolutely, you know, content and satisfied with And what what would you say, again, going back to the same sort of Mm -hmm. question, what do you feel like your biggest challenge when you're doing that interview process and trying to figure out if you guys are a good fit and if this is something that you want to take on? Sometimes, and it doesn't happen very often, I feel people generally, when they call me for interior design services, they are open to the idea of like, we don't know what to do with our home. We want somebody who's got the expertise. Some difficulties are really the communication mostly or the expectation for what I offer versus what they they imagine uh, what's in the, in, in, in the market. Uh, we have unrealistic expectations sometimes on mm-hmm. uh, budgets and uh, what it costs to do a f- certain project. So I always try and find a solution that way. Sometimes I've had, and this happens a little bit more with commercial spaces where a business owner wants uh, sort of an overall estimate to what's going to happen and what's going to cost for his restaurant before I even sit down and put a plan together, which is, you know, anybody can walk into a space and give you an estimate of, uh, oh, well, this is, it's going to cost a uh, hundred K to, uh, do the renovations and the finishes that you want, but it's it's very unrealistic yeah. to do that. I see contractors that walk in and don't ask questions on, okay, well, what do you specifically want in this space? Uh, we'll give a ballpark estimate, even though they are they have the expertise, they know how much things cost, they buy the lumber, they buy the fixtures, they buy this and that. There's still a lot that could be different once they open up the walls and stuff like that. So clients or homeowners, rather, they kind of skip over all of that and they want something to happen without the full commitment mm-hmm. to the project. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. Okay. With that being said, I just want to go back to some of the projects that you've worked on in mm-hmm. the past. What would you say one of the most sort of fantastic projects that you've worked on that you're really proud of? Mm-hmm. Tell me that story. Describe it a little bit. Oh my goodness! Proud of all of them. Good answer. <laughs> Absolutely. I, honestly, but something that sticks out to you. Like that sticks you know. out. <clears throat> I would have to say uh, one project in particular uh, where I've really enjoyed working uh, with the homeowners because their surprise to the finished look was just amazing. They they they've known me. They from the get go. We've had our meetings and they say, we trust you fully and completely. The colors you choose, the style that you choose, whatever we want, you know, uh, you want to do with the walls, go for it. And so I had full reign on what's going to happen with yeah. the space. And it was a kitchen uh, redesign. We opened up another room into the kitchen and uh, I just filled that space with the, the beautiful cabin tree some of the things that I really want to pay attention to and I really pay attention to and, and, and work very closely with the clients is how do you live in your home? Who's in the kitchen more and who's doing the cooking? How do you, how do you like your storage? What's going to work? So I trying to get all these answers 
before I even make any plans. And then I do a layout or do the first drafts, really keeping in mind what would make the best sense for their lifestyle. And also I have to keep in mind uh, what is that going to look like in terms of resale down the road? Let's say they're going to live in that home five, six years or two, three years or even 10 mm -hmm. years. What is it going to look like in the market later on, right? So I have to keep in mind everything that's going to affect this space. I did a kitchen where it was about 15 feet of countertop space on the just the parameters. And then large island, they have a, a large family. And uh, I put in there everything possible to make life easier. So everything that's inside the cupboards that will help you with storage and make it easier. You've got yeah. magic corners, you have uh, appliance lift. There's all sorts of wonderful stuff that really make life a lot easier in the kitchen and, and more, you're more efficient. You're, you're in there, you want in and out, you've got pla place for everything. And uh, you just- So how did it turn out? It turned out beautifully. Uh, still till now, I, you know, we follow, <laughs> my clients follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and they're always liking some of the new projects that uh, I do. Beautiful. I still hear from them telling me we love our kitchen, we love our space. So what and would you I say, think, you know, for that particular one, what would you say mm, that, you know, what sort of thing that made it most successful as a project? <clears throat> a lot of things come to mind, really having uh, the right team to, to work with. It's always so, important, uh, for sure. Uh, absolutely, very important. Uh, the quality of the work that you do, the quality of the customer service, the quality of feedback, and uh, again, communication is, is key. Uh, so when you say the right team, tell us more about what you mean by that. I work with several uh, construction companies, and I've worked with actually quite a few of them uh, just like the clients you have to ri find the right fit yeah the people the team the crew that you really can work almost seamlessly with right uh, they understand the, uh, what you want in terms if you're an interior designer they, they, they'll understand uh, how you like to do things uh, the layouts the styles even though there's always instruction and and design details on the paperwork and stuff like that but your communication style and is 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 very similar, so you're able to be clear, be honest, be uh, a beat about things. Because I I find attitude also is very important. Very very important, uh, especially like when you're doing something that's like multi-step that requires a lot of engagement, a lot of sort of absolutely. time pouring into it, and and especially with you. with the way that we work, uh, the construction is not start to end. Uh, go, go, go. There is it's a start and uh, a problem. Start and uh, less problems. Yes. Oh, oh, there's a surprise. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes we open up walls and there are things that shouldn't be there. And I'm talking electrical or I'm talking that some two by four got, you know, cut to pass wires through or whatever. And then being held back by a little shim of wood. And that's that's the support that they wow. get. Oh, absolutely. There are things you open up the, the floors and there's multiple layers of vinyl or multiple layers of flooring there and it becomes um, a party too, <laughs> if crazy. I should so say. So how, how do you compare <clears throat> your day-to-day -day in this industry to some of the home renovation shows? Oh, goodness. Home renovation shows, uh, while they do add a little bit of drama to give the show a little bit of flair. A little. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of drama. Mm. I think it still somehow gives people the un unrealistic uh, view of how everything works. Yeah. Now, uh, that's not to say it can't go as smoothly But sometimes. how so, if you don't mind me asking? Well, some of the shows, and, and not to be specific, really. I know when I first started, people were asking me, oh, do you work like the shows uh, that we see on uh, on TV, and I'm like, no, no, no that's not really what mm -hmm, happens. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more that happens behind the scene and a lot more uh, interaction and communication and yeah. problem solving uh, than, you know, uh, somebody showing up and say, well, we have a problem with this. And then, you know, camera changes direction and it's taken care of. And finally, you have a beautiful yeah. house. We, we make sure that we do our homework as best as possible with a contractor. We do all the tests and all the examination we need to to do with the engineers, with 
you know, every other profession in terms of plumbing, HVAC, uh, electrical, mm -hmm. and that. So we're not running into surprises. And the way I like to work, I like to sort of have everything taken care of and lined up. Pre-construction start, because if there is a surprise, we're not delayed and we're not put, you know, uh, putting the client out of their home mm -hmm. a little bit longer than they should. With that and, uh, in mind, yes. I mean, again, at the end of the day, there's no such thing as a project with no hiccups. Oh, no. But tell me a little bit more about a project that you've done where you're like, holy crap. Like, oh, goodness. Those that's are normally good. the most interesting ones. That's well, <laughs> yes, there is one. I, I think it was last year. Absolutely. I came into uh, this client's home in the Glebe and uh, they wanted a kitchen remodel. Now, there, one side of the kitchen a wall used to be an exterior wall and they've been in addition to it. So it was just a one floor addition to uh, that kitchen, that floor. And the decision was to take down that wall. We were able to take it. We were going to do the structure so it supports everything that it needs to support. We we're going to take that exterior wall and open up the kitchen to the existing addition uh, of a family room. Mm -hmm. Now, once they started to tear down that wall, they found that that wall and everything else attached to it in the addition is completed rot rotted. Ugh. Absolutely unlivable. And they don't know how it held up. Anyways, so that was, a, one, a big delay because suddenly we are getting into a territory where we need to destroy something that was already there, yeah. part of their home, the back, you know, addition needed to go completely. It was not sal uh, salvageable and uh, we needed to get back to the drafts to design. They're like, okay, Raquel, well, you're the interior designer. What should we do? We have a blank space now that we can... Just have fun with what are we going to attach to the uh, Well, you're having kitchen. fun with a lot of money. And but, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's one thing I have to keep in mind yeah. always, right? But to them, it was just let us know what the possibilities are and we'll go from there. So, of course, it, it was redesigning that flair first floor, redesigning the addition, redesigning the landscape outside and uh, making a decision whether we're actually gonna do now a second floor to that new addition or just go with a, a high ceiling, vaulted ceiling, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and everything with it. So a fireplace that's 20 foot tall, uh, stone and stuff like that. So the most interesting thing is that once we started to dig, it didn't have, it didn't have a foundation, but there were a number of interesting old, I, I want to say maybe what could have been a foundation. And then they were debating for a while, is this ancient or not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean ancient, but really ancient. Like what was there before that home? And then a home in the Glebe. And some of them are still heritage yeah, homes. Some of them I are think. considered heritage. Some of them have been there, you know, a couple hundred years. Uh, uh, so you uh, do have to also pay attention to absolutely. when you're doing them. Oh, absolutely. So we had to hold off the construction because we needed to do investigation on what's under the ground. Can we touch it? Can we remove it? Is it going to cascade into anything else? And the project took a lot longer than anticipated because suddenly we need, need to build, you know, more into the home just so we can get on with the kitchen remodel and yeah. then uh, the rest of the house. So that was quite interesting because every time we opened up a space, uh, there we found something I'm like okay we didn't expect this that's and crazy uh, so if this yeah. was an episode on one of those shows it mm -hmm. would have probably been like a I don't know part one part two part three probably oh absolutely it wouldn't have been like just a one episode y kind you of know thing. to be honest I think it took about I want to say over a year to complete only wow. because not only the delays with investigations and tests and uh, you know going back to the drawing board you also have the new permits, the new allowances, the new finding the, the, the crews to do this, the excavation, finding, you know, all sorts of things that now we have to consider that we didn't need to yeah. consider before, right? Uh, so it just added a lot more to the plate. It than, added than a it lot more been. to the and plate. Budget and budget-wise, it's probably way over. Well, they were happy to, it's their forever home. 
Yeah, and I mean, so the other were, thing, too, is it yeah. does add a huge value <clears throat> to the home now that you've figured Excuse out the me. issue, you fixed it, it's no oh, longer absolutely. there, you're able to show everything that you've done, the work. Yeah, uh, We get that a lot as a real estate agent, like where, mm -hmm. you know, an addition has been built, there's no permit, uh, or an extra that's been oh, put yeah. on. DIYs. The work has been done sort of, you know, mm -hmm. half-ass, if you want to call it. There's so many different things that we see. Yes. Um, and I find sometimes it's easier to go to step backwards and get it done properly. Absolutely. So later on, you're not really paying the price for it when it comes to either reselling the home or giving it to your child or what have you. Yeah, no, absolutely. With that being said, Raquel, what do you feel you've learned from a project like this? Oh boy, <laughs> expect anything and everything. I told you. Uh, you hey, know what? I'm always no prepared. questions off limits. I here. love being prepared. I walk into a home, and uh, one of the things that I like think, and I like to, I guess, tell my clients when I walk in, I already know what the space is gonna look like or needs to look like. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen those shows where you've got uh, uh, the expertise of investigation or whatever, and they're like already have things figured out. Mm -hmm. My mind works the same thing. I walk in. And uh, I've already had a conversation with the homeowners and I know a little bit what their style is like and what kind of, you know, home uh, daily life they want, they like to have. So I walk in and I see the colors that they've surrounded themselves with, pieces that they've got here and there. And I get a sense and then I'm like, okay, uh, take a look at a space. They tell me, well, we want this wall down this wall up or whatever and and I already see everything in my head right mm -hmm. so I'm like okay these are the options we have uh, we can you know I can present them with options of having a big island or versus having uh, storage here and I'm always talking about kitchen remodels because it's I find that that's the one people go for because it makes the biggest impact in their lives. Well, we've we already established the kitchen is about 90% of the absolutely. home. Absolutely. And yeah. oftentimes, the way uh, things happen, when I'm in a home to remodel the kitchen, the project goes all the way to the front door. So we're working on the flooring everywhere to uh, on the main floor. We're working on offices, uh, spaces, the family room, the fireplace, the powder room. And uh, oftentimes uh, I get a uh, call back from the same client and they're like, okay, we're ready to do the second floor. And so we start with the en suites, with the bathrooms and everything else. But for me, um, having to work with the heart of the home is like my uh, most rewarding part. Yeah, so I'm gonna take you back again yes, to the question. Yes, I know, you keep, yeah. <laughs> what have you learned from that particular project? Ooh, which one? Where the it one was where full of the, surprises. The full of surprises, yeah. Goodness, what did I learn? Patience. Patience. <laughs> patience is a virtue for sure. Patience. I feel like patience for a lot of people doesn't really come. Like nobody wants to be patient, right? Nobody no. has that to to start with. No. Uh, but every now and then, when someone's like, "I want to be patient. I want to be patient," they're never given patience. What they're given is that opportunity to be be patient. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Uh, so in this one in particular, it sounds like you were really patient for about a year or so to, yeah, to no, get the project I, uh, back on track. Uh, absolutely. And uh, it was wonderful. So what else did I learn from there? Honestly, I don't want it to sound like I'm bragging. I'm just good. <laughs> it just haven't been able to communicate effectively and honestly with the clients and put their mind to at ease that, you know what? Well, we, we were meeting this this issue we have the solution it's going to take a little bit longer yeah and oftentimes homeowners are very understanding they know that this is something that you know nobody would have it's anticipated. not your fault i mean at the end of the exactly. day exactly their house uh, in terms of any other lessons really having on speed dial everybody else that you need having the right team yeah having the right and we team keep coming sure. back to that sort of oh, theme absolutely. right like having the right team in place and, and kind of yes. working with them it feels like it's it's got to be a cohesive unit, right? Oh, like absolutely. If they're not working together, if you're having, you know, a team member that's not really picking up the slack, you're kind of dragging yourself down with that team member. Absolutely. And sometimes it's not about the team member not wanting, and I, I find this quite often with, with a lot of teams, it's not about the team member not wanting to do the work. Mm -hmm. It's that team member feeling like they maybe don't know how to do the work, that they're actually delaying the process a little bit and then acting like they're, you know, they don't want to be part of that team. So... Uh, Sometimes, sometimes some, it some might be an ability, find, sometimes it might just be the willingness is not there. 
Uh, true, true. Um, I got to work with all sorts of wonderful crews out there. And uh, again, communication style. Communication uh, is the key. Communication. You you have some crews that are more proactive in certain uh, circumstances. Um, I have about two, three crews that I love working with because once I have all the paperwork ready for them, in terms of installation of, let's say, backsplash or flooring, there's a certain pattern, certain design. This is where we need electrical for certain items and um, and certain features and stuff like that. If anything happens and I'm not around, I had to take a couple of uh, trips for family reasons this past year. And I left a crew that was absolutely wonderful to work with. My clients rave. As soon as I open the door, they're like, oh, we love so-and-so. And Amazing. Really, and, and, and it's really good to hear. And, and that so, actually, like, I, I'm glad they brought this up. It, um, in our business, it's very common that we're relying on a lot of services people or mm. uh, trades or other sort of partners, I want to call them, yes. uh, in doing the transaction or in doing the, the business that we're doing. Uh, with that being said, a lot of the times, they do drop the ball. And it's not necessarily on you, but you're the client facing. Yes. How would you translate that to the client in those situations? There's a couple of situations that uh, would have to be mentioned first. Sometimes I'm bringing in my crew and they're working under my instructions or uh, I don't wanna, well, we're working together. Uh, I introduce the uh, contractor, the clients uh, interview them. They, there's certainly never an obligation to work with anybody I bring in. I just simply give access to good construction companies mm -hmm. that I trust the quality of their work. I trust their customer service, uh, service, their work ethic. And I know they will go above and beyond of what written in the contracts. And then other times I work with contractors that the clients know of and they've been recommended or they've worked with them in the past. And I will work closely with both companies, you know, yeah. make sure that everything that the client needs and everything that I've designed with the client is presented to the contractor. Now, if something happens and they drop the ball, when it comes to a crew that I've sort of brought in, I introduced whether the, co the client contracts them directly or not, or through me, I make sure that I'm there to make, offer a solution. Something got reinstalled uh, installed incorrectly or there's an issue with it or it, whatever it needs in terms of correction. I oftentimes find that we can find a solution and we can rework it to the customer's satisfaction, mm -hmm. right? And again, it really comes down to who you're working with. I find a lot of the times like I've, I've had situations like this happening before, mm -hmm. but a lot of the times it's really just the client wanting to be heard. Absolutely. Nothing more. Absolutely. Like there is that frustration. Obviously, they know it's not your fault. Obviously, yeah. they know that you cannot take responsibility for someone else's actions because But they do ask me for person, advice. Absolutely. You know, but they will ask for advice and they will bring it to you and they will be a little upset with you because you brought them. But how you handle it yes. is really the key. And for me, a lot of the times it sounds like well, what I've been able to do mm -hmm. is just basically lay it on me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tell me how you feel. Oh, no, absolutely. Tell me what's going on <laughs> because I know it's not my fault. I know that for a fact. Yeah. But I can't say that to the client because no, absolutely it's not, not. going to really, like there is no uh, sort of gain in really combating that or like pointing fingers or like I told you. So none of that. No, no, because at the end of the day, you are the face of 100%, the project. 100%. Right? And because the, of that, you really got to act like the face of the project. And at the end of the day, I, I have to believe uh, my goal and the construction company's goal is the same. We want to give the client the best, best service possible. possible. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The best product, the best finish, the best service. So I don't believe there's anything that would happen. Uh, let's say they dropped the ball or whatever. It would be intentional. Maybe negligence of, of some sort, but certainly not intentional mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, a big costly uh, uh, mistake or anything like that. Thankfully, knock on wood, nothing like that has ever yeah. happened. Well, that's good. Uh, minor good. things like touch-ups and stuff like that. So far, you know, uh, I've been able to just navigate through the ins and outs of anything that might come up as a surprise. And yeah. 
I take responsibility and I take care of the thing. And I'm always on the road back and forth, you know, making sure uh, the clients are getting what they want in terms of of uh, the designs and the, mm -hmm. you know, and the finish and the style and the, the quality that, you know, we've, we've agreed on. Amazing. Uh, I did have one sort of last question just yeah. because we're coming kind of the end of the, the our time together. It's kind Absolutely. of sad that I'm missing that. But mm -hmm. with that being said, what do you think is the next big thing for Parlamar Interiors? Oh, goodness. Um, there's going to be quite coming, <laughs> coming through. I love, um, I love for Lamar Interiors. The opportunities it gives me to work with uh, wonderful people, with clients, with uh, homes, really uh, be creative and do the things that I do best and uh, the things that I love to do. Um, I'm simply looking to grow and I am growing and I'm, I'm making you know, solid uh, partnerships with other uh, other businesses in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a colleague who does a lot of uh, my permits and my drafting and stuff like that, uh, wanting to introduce interior design to his business. And so I will be the face of the interior design for the upcoming expanded businesses my own business is expanding into uh, more areas outside of Ottawa. Um, and from the sounds of it, it sounds like they're also going a lot more commercial now than I've been doing some commercial as well too, as, yeah. yeah uh, residential is always- uh, Bread and butter, very, for sure. Yeah. Exactly, absolutely. And commercial, I have done few clinics, few um, home clinics, few clinics uh, in commercial spaces. Uh, it's wonderful, but uh, for me, Honestly, the sky's the limit. I kind of, I don't Amazing. close doors. I, and this is, this is how I got to where I am right now. Uh, I love where I am in the market. I love where I am in terms of my reputation with my colleagues, with my industry partners and stuff like that, because uh, I'm optimistic. Yeah. And I say yes to opportunities. And of course, so to my more due diligence. 2024 is going to be more saying yes to opportunities and, oh, and working absolutely. things out. Absolutely. Uh, Raquel, really appreciate you being on the show. Um, Thank you. I want to kind of finish with a little bit of a touch here just mm -hmm. to bring a little bit more about Parlamar by the sea, mm -hmm. the breeziness, the yes. ease of doing business, uh, the opportunities are limitless, being able to kind of use that space and, and, you know, figure out that peaceful space, that serenity within your home or your yes. business to be able to live happier and produce more. Absolutely. And for that, Parlamar is the place to be. Really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so and much. And if you guys like this show, you like what you see, <laughs> a lot more episodes coming like this. We're talking a lot about businesses within Ottawa and what we do to bring to this beautiful city that we have. Uh, yeah. So hit the like. And if you don't mind, uh, hit the comment. Let us know about any businesses that you want us to interview. Thanks again. Really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. <laughs> We'd love to uh, see more of you. And uh, thanks again. Have a good day.